All right, everybody, welcome to the LTA show. Happy 2022. I've got Devin over here. What's up? Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, last time we did this was, what, summer? No. Like, probably within, like, six months ago, five months ago. So a while ago. Yeah. What, how have you been? I've been doing pretty well. Um, just a lot of new things happening. It's growing, like always. How about you? Been good. Um, yeah, it's a new year, so constantly trying to post new uh, episodes, have a reoccurring guest come back, mm -hmm. see what they've been up to. How often are you posting? Um, I know for New Year's and break, it's typically three times a week at least, but when it's not as busy or when I don't have as much free time, I try to do once a week. Three podcasts? Yeah. Or actually, like, the start of January, like the roster that I posted on Instagram, like... Half of them are already like scheduled for this week, so I've already done. This is like the fifth one right now of this week, so I'm trying to do it every single day. Yeah, yeah, the grind. So why'd you uh, bring me here today? Um, you know, I wanted to check on you because I know you've done a lot of stuff going on, uh, a lot of good things. Um, I know you've got into a uh, business. Or part of a was it marketing? No, yeah. it's like kind of like I forgot like the exact role, mm -hmm. but I wanted to see how that's been because I've seen like uh, occasional posts on your Instagram of like some clients I think or podcast or episode. I'm not sure what it is, but yeah, I'm very curious to see what what's been going on with you. Yeah, right now I'm running a marketing agency. Uh, I have a, a partner too, and they help. Me do like the fulfillment work side of things and I'll do like the sales part of the side. So I'll find some clients and together we'll like fulfill them. Like right now we're doing a lot of press work. So um, like getting people featured in press publications, like entrepreneurs or businesses. And a lot of for like press, it's for like a credibility type of thing. A lot of people, they don't have a crazy like resume, especially if you own a business, it's not like you have like work experience and like you can just show that as a business but no like press is like one of the ways that businesses use this credibility but yeah that's what's been going on recently um yeah have you still been doing rock climbing as well or yeah so um right now i, I coach at like the gym right down over there and it's going pretty well um yeah just getting myself back into it too Nice. And then I remember you mentioned coaching Valorant. I don't know if it was during the podcast, but it was interesting to hear about it because I didn't expect it. Are you uh, still doing that? No, I don't really do that. But I used to play on a I used to play on a team, and we were like top top 100 in North America um, at the time. And yeah, just for fun, I'll just coach people in Valorant, like people that like. I mean, because there aren't that many people that can teach someone how to play a video game. It's mm -hmm. kind of weird to say that. Like, even though, like, games, like, can be easy, but, like, to get at a high level, um, it's not really common knowledge that people know. So, yeah, I was just doing that for a little bit. And actually, like, the other day, like, um, one of my old teammates asked me to become a coach for, really? the, for the org that they're part of. And I was like, hmm, I'll think about it. But, yeah, I probably won't. But That's pretty crazy. Like, when you were coaching, or at least did a little bit of that in Valorant, um, for those that don't really know Valorant as much, is it more, like, skill-wise, or is it also coming to teamwork or, like, ability-wise? Because every character has a set ability that's different from everyone else's. Mm -hmm. So, like, you could probably break down, I think, most games into, like, a certain aspect. So it's like a shooter. So shooters are, like... A lot of moving with the mouse mm -hmm. and then a lot of like just knowledge about how the game works so you could just you can kind of divide it into like two main categories like one's just like aiming with the mouse and the other one's just like thinking like how to think in the game in certain situations and just getting really good at that um, 
So what was the question again? About so, uh, um, it might it might sound confusing, but like when you're coaching, let's say you're coaching like me, mm -hmm. right? Never really played Valorant. Would you teach them first like the mechanics and like how to aim, or would you also teach them like first, okay, what character do you want to play? Here's the abilities, what they can do with it, and then once they figure out their abilities, then you start working with their aim, or like how would you approach it? Most people know like the very basics. So normally I take people that are like have been playing the game for a little bit, so they like so like where my coaching is actually useful, where you could just learn that stuff on your own. Um, what would I teach you first? Well, if you've already been playing a certain time, so I I can like compare this to coaching for a lot of things. It's not just like playing a video game. This can be for climbing. This can be for any type of hobby or skill that you learn. Mm -hmm. Um, so it kind of works for anything. First, I would ask you, like, where do you want to get to? Like, maybe you want to get to a certain rank. Maybe you just want to be, like, the best in your friend group. And, like, okay, that's fair enough. Now we know. And, like, how, how long would you want to do that? For me, I wanted to play professionally within one year. And I wasn't able to do that, but at least I knew what it was. So I could kind of divide, divide how my days like, and how much time are you willing to commit? Like, an hour a day, half an hour a day, like two hours a week, six hours a day? And then, like, put in a reasonable time frame, like, create something where you could learn every day and get better at. Um, so, yeah, that's how a lot of coaching is bro bro broken down. Okay. And it's obviously not, like, one thing. It could be, there's a lot of elements to it. Would you also like spectate their gameplay and see like what kind of mistakes they're doing? Like, would you would you like analyze every single thing that they're doing, mm -hmm. or like like they'll just tell you what they think they're they're bad at, and then you just kind of work on what they tell you? Mm -hmm. So first, um, I was some, partly coaching the team um, that I was playing on. I wasn't like fully coaching, but I was also teaching them certain things and, and bot reviewing. So VOD review is like when we record gameplay, maybe we record team gameplay, and then we just, it's like, like football football players do this, where they just record the game and they just go over it with the team and they watch it over and they see what they did right, what they did wrong, like the communication during that, and um, what was the enemy team also thinking and breaking that down. And also like, um, yeah, just how you respond to that. like. A lot of like quick decision making is made in like a fast paced type of game. So making sure at a high level it's like making the right decisions in a short amount of time. But yeah. Pretty cool. And have you also played like CS before Valorant? Because I know Valorant is very similar to CS just with abilities and characters. Mm -hmm. Like it's a very similar aspect of it. Yeah, like the game is pretty similar. Um, I did play CS a little bit, but I wasn't playing it seriously. Like when I tried playing Valorant, or I started playing Valorant, um, I was just, I was just like I had like three games. I was like League, CS, or Valorant. I was like I want to go pro in a game, and these are the only three games I play. So I'm gonna just choose one and then just try it. And like at the time, I was just like silver in all of them. Yeah. And I just chose one, and then I got to the top at Valorant just by that. What was your highest rank? I like rank 200 ish. Like in North America, just like, norm, like just do the player base wise. Dang, you, you hear that, everybody? You can be silver and you can make it big. Yeah, within like six months. As long you as you practice. That. You can definitely do that. Pretty cool. It's funny that you mentioned like being a pro on Valorant because um, I think during quarantine, when the pandemic first hit, I had a lot of time. And I was just like still into like CS back in the day. And I remember I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try like applying for a team. And like it was interesting at first because like did and I never knew what it's like because you know they're like, all right, here's your tryout. And then you know I was like, uh, dude, these teams sound kind of cool. But then I'm like, I don't even know if I'm like qualified. Mm -hmm. And then so I applied for one. And I'll never forget it, because like, I was like, dude, I don't know if I'm going to be good. I started like training before the tryout. And then I didn't, it was like a it was like a club team. Like it wasn't super serious. It wasn't like we're going to go on land or tourneys. It was more just like 
we'll do like an online tournament once in a while. We'll like do strats, kind of like what pros do, but like it wasn't to that level yet. Mm -hmm. It was just like more than your average competitive player. By the way, I wasn't pro. I, I was on like the top 100 teams, but I wasn't getting paid. Like we won tournaments yeah. and like maybe got money for it, but we weren't like paid by an org or anything. Still the experience though. Yeah. I'd say it's definitely fun to learn like when you're in a team because like I learned like so many things that I've done wrong and like where I would like have to play as a role in the team. And just like kind of communicating better and like some things. I think I just learned so much because of that. Yeah, it's just like. And then also just like understanding like how much time was needed. So I had to like dedicate some time just by myself, just practicing some lineups, that sort of stuff. Yeah, sure. Yeah. There are like, co actually there's like college teams now for like video games. And that's, I don't know, that's kind of crazy to think about. Yeah. Even though like I'm like an enthusiast, like that's kind of, it's kind of weird. I don't think you. I don't think you get the most, the least amount of girlfriends in that uh, sports team. But uh, but I mean, it's definitely a nice uh, window for people that play so many different types of video games. Yeah. To be like considered in a team for a college, I feel like that just for them it just seems like you've reached another level because it's like you've proven your skill to them and like sure everyone thinks of like up you're a nerd yeah they, they always think like dude you're so sweaty and all that but it's just like it's kind of cool though to see like how big esports is nowadays because at first like you know parents would be like get off the game like you can't make money and now you see like kids playing fortnite making like millions yeah and you see like adults in like teams even like mobile competitive mobile games yeah it's always interest, interesting to see how video games have gone a long way mm -hmm. definitely yeah there's some older people but not that that it's a difference in my experience like the college teams they weren't really as good as the teams that were in college because if you're in college you have to keep a certain amount of grades so like that's like whatever six hours of the day five five six hours of the day at least so yeah, oftentimes the college teams we played against were like, they were okay. Not yeah. all of them were crazy good. But also because there's like, the barrier to entry to probably get on a college team is pretty low compared to just a normal team. Yeah, I noticed that. Like, for San Jose State, I was actually looking into the esports and I was considering joining their Overwatch team. And I just like was putting in like the form. I was like, hey, I'm interested. Here's my rank. And they're like, oh, like, Here's the here's a Discord link, and I was like a group, and I was like, so like, when's the tryout? And they're like, well, you're kind of like in the team already, but like, we still have to get you know tryouts and figure out what roles, and like, we just never followed through. And I was like, uh, is this really what a college team was like? You know, yeah. it just felt kind of disorganized. But then again, like some of the leaders or organizers are like college students in some cases. Mm -hmm. It was just interesting from my experience. I think you're getting a scholarship too to some colleges just because you're good at games. I think that's funny. It's, it's interesting. And like some, they even have like some like sponsors, you know, like like Logitech or something like that, Razer. Yeah. Those big companies that want to just sponsor you. Mm, that depends. There's like, there's a few types of sponsorships. Um, I have to think about this. But one of them, like the most basic sponsorship, you see like an Instagram influencer have this, they'll just have like a link in their bio. That's called like an affiliate sponsorship, where they just have a link. And I forgot the names of like the other types of sponsorships. I'd have to look back at it. But there's other ones where they give you like an account, like maybe it's like a team that's sponsored and they'll give you an account, an account where they have super steep discounts. So maybe like the affiliate's like 15% off, maybe like this one's like 30% off. And that's like a pro, like, I don't know, like a pro deal. Like a lot of businesses work together, just like, just on that, like the climbing gym and like some climbing shoe companies will give them like certain deals for their employees. Mm -hmm. And that'll happen a lot for a lot of businesses. And the last one would be like the sponsorships like everyone wants for like games, which is like they give you like 
some sort of like monthly payment. So they like so you um, basically promote their product, um, and also so like you always like add only like, only wear their type of stuff. Sometimes like on it's, the jersey. Yeah, sometimes it's like exclusive. But yeah, those are the main types of songs. Yeah, and I think like with. With those, like a lot of people see that as like they want to reach that level, and like at some point, like it, some either just like get so like they have this high ego, like they're better than other people, or like I don't know, just a lot of people burnt out from games that like, they just don't realize it when the game is trying to like reach at that level, but they don't like understand like you gotta also take care of yourself I feel like just as a pro not many like see how much sacrifices were made during that because like, I remember in like CS there's like a pro player that like legit had to like skip classes and like had mm -hmm. to still go to college but was still signed as a pro t pro player mm -hmm. and then like you know some people just have like some family emergencies but like they're still making the sacrifice to keep playing yeah all that sort of like everyone's like situation varies and like yeah just interesting to see it's definitely very draining um yeah i had to stop because it was super stop like playing seriously because it was super draining on me and i had to get into a different thing and i chose the entrepreneurial kind of path which is not in at the least like less draining mm -hmm. but it's just different because i get to talk to people in person so yeah, that's good for a change. Yeah. So we were talking about New Year's, New Year's type thing. Yeah. And yeah, you, so like what I was saying earlier about New Year's was um, most people they won't they won't really define exactly what they want. Maybe they'll have a re resolution. And maybe they'll forget about it, or they won't actually speak what they want. And a lot of times it's because that if you have an ideal and you specify your real ideal then you specify your grounds for failure so you know when you fail okay and a lot of people don't like that feeling when they know that they're failing and that's like the worst that's a bad way to go about it because the odds of you hating your goal or your ideal is like next to zero if you don't even specify it so yeah that's just important to know about like People that are says setting their resolutions or their their goals or whatever it's here. So yeah. So set a s achievable goal, right? Um, oh yeah, you could use yeah the cheap, the smart metric. Or just like you know, like what what kind of like tips? Just make sure it's something that you can hold yourself accountable for. Mm. And like actions speak louder than words, so actually doing it. Oh, for goal setting? Yeah, yeah, just just for somebody that's like, that keeps making goals, but like never really follows through. Mm, okay, so you, so this is like a coaching thing too. It's like start point, the end point, and then you have everything in between. Most people are always focused about, oh yeah, set the goal, set the goal. That's not the biggest part. The biggest part is like everything in between. So you make sure that you have sort of a plan. So like... I have like one page plans of every single like thing I want to achieve and I just like make a flow chart of like the order like the order of operations of like what I need to do to get from this step to this step. It's like it's like a fun, it's like a game. Um, and then be able to system systematize it. So like separate one hour of your day just to like read. Let's say you wanna read like five books, ten books, twenty books this year. Um, just like set apart one hour so you like systemize it so oh now you know eventually you'll reach that and that, that's really it so plan it systemize it systemize it and then uh, set a time yeah. or set like a schedule for yourself mm -hmm. okay probably record it too look back at it like keep yourself in check daily log yeah document yeah for sure what about you anything that you're working towards it doesn't have to be like a a resolution it doesn't uh, have to be like this year thing just like a resolution type thing I would say continuing to know better about myself because 
I know last year and the year before that, I was more focused on just working hard and like hustling, the hustling mentality, um, like entrepreneurial kind of mindset, but then also just being aware of like that I don't want to like fall into imposter syndrome and I don't want to like, I want to like understand like myself in terms of like what I know I'm like really good at and what I'm not good at. That way I'm not like, you know, in a delusional mindset. Mm -hmm. So just like being more aware about myself. Is it, have you gone over like, there's like, I feel like there's like, there's like the past that you know about yourself and then there's like the part that you haven't yet experienced or like used that's actually part of yourself too. I don't know what you think of that. But like, Asshole. how do you, yeah, like, how do you go about, like, understanding it? Do you, like, like, look at your past and you, like, think of, like, how you reacted to certain, like, experiences and, like, hmm, maybe that's something to know? Um, sometimes I do look back at my past and see, like, what I did. Like, so, like, let's say it was, uh, like looking back compared to like college like before leading up to college in high school like I put a lot of pressure on myself trying to like keep up with everybody because everyone was like so focused on getting good grades to like get into the school that they want and then I would just like have that like societal pressure like just doing good mm-hmm. and just like not really understanding that you know I got to take a break from myself and understand like like it's okay if I'm not as smart as other people like understanding like like everyone's different and not trying to like compare myself to other people I definitely looked back at that but I've used that not as like a negative thing but just saying like how far I've grown from before just like trying to achieve all the goals that everyone else is doing Mm -hmm. but more just achieving goals for myself okay so how you how you've grown like not to repeat yeah just like understand like I'm not the same person as I was, like, a year ago. What about, like, imposter syndrome? Like, I'm not, you, like, brushed up on it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you were, like, thinking about. It was, like, um, I really wanted, after, like, consuming a lot of Gary Vee, right? So he's, like, you know, talking a lot about entrepreneurial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was just, like, kind of inspired by it. And I was, like, you know, I want to, like, I want to keep doing what he does by, like, documenting and, like, making all these sort of things and businesses and having that sort of like meeting and all that but then I realized like sometimes it, I don't need I don't need to even have like you know like a business meeting and all the all like the uh, documentation I just want to like be myself and not trying to like trying to copy exactly what he does so like just like you know listen to podcasts and music and all that like yeah not trying to be exactly like him because like I felt like I just was like wasn't really who I was chasing the same person which is like not wrong to have like a role model but like not to be like trying to be an exact replica of them Mm, that makes sense what about like imposter syndrome like mm, okay let's look into like the eye of someone else like Mm -hmm. maybe they see you're doing stuff and like oh I know Felix why is he being like that I know who he really is. Do you ever feel like like people like is that like the type of imposter syndrome that you feel, or is it more like you don't want to be copying someone else? I think it's it's kind of both. Like yeah. some people are obviously going to be surprised by how much things I've done compared to like last time they saw me. Yeah. Um, but I'm not like too worried exactly what other people like. I'm still kind of worried, but it's not as like drastic. It's more like I don't want to copy somebody's exact lifestyle. Yeah. and not be like true to myself you know yeah. here's what's interesting um, that someone told me and they're, they're a millionaire right <laughs> and they feel the imposter syndrome too they're saying that it never stops it doesn't matter like where you go what type of wins or losses you have you will always have that feeling when you're trying to achieve something more than what you are already and so that kind of stuck with me I'm like dang that feeling doesn't go away. 
And this guy's already where he is, and he's kind of set, you know? But he still feels like, it's like looking around, like, dang, I don't belong here. <laughs> they just, what am I doing? It just feels kind of out of it. Yeah. Not really in the right group. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't stop. I think it's just like, I feel like it's, it's probably just the, the mindset of just trying to be better, you know, yeah. trying to continue to not be too comfortable. Mm -hmm. so maybe that's, I think that's what could have led to it. I mean, I'm, that's what I'm, it feels like I'm doing. I'm trying to like learn all these things, but at the same time when I do it, I just feel like, I don't feel like I'm me, you know, I feel like I'm just, I don't know, it feels weird. I, I can totally see where he's coming from. I just, yeah. I feel kind of left left like like not where I'm supposed to be. Uh-huh. I'm just like talking to other friends. I'm just like wow. I mean I mean a lot of people like share like the good sides, so I might be part of it. <laughs> Everyone probably feels somewhat like that. I'm trying to like act perfect and trying to like showcase some of their good side. Mm-hmm. A lot of people yeah, a lot of people are more inclined to share their good stuff. But more people like feel, you know how like that saying where people like humans are more inclined to feel like stronger, ne stronger negative emotion. Like a lot of people probably feel like that more, even if it's not that big of a deal. Like maybe what you're feeling is not that big of a deal. Maybe it is. Um, but yeah, people have like an inclination to make it bigger than what. Yeah, make yeah. worse things worse. <laughs> yeah. Infinitely worse. But yeah. That was great. Great talk. We got like three minutes. Three minutes? Yeah. I'm gonna do some type of uh, close. <laughs> so if you wanna close it now or if you just wanna like maybe talk about something, you know, whatever you want. Do you have any last questions or um any sort of like since you've already asked me, any kind of goals, not just for this year, but like any long term or stuff that you plan on doing or thought about? Yes. I, as a climber, like, like health wise, I want to become stronger. Um, not just like a general strong, I want to become, there's like a grades, like there's like grades and like they rank them on a climb of the 11 this year. Um, that's a kind of a crazy goal. I haven't like, reach that it's kind of it's like one of the like the hardest climbs in the whole gym I want to be able to do that type of level um, another one would be just for like life wise I would just want to travel a little bit more like everyone my age wants to travel and like visit new places I want to go to Japan like visit like family members I've never met before and, like, like yeah I visit, I visit the roots, like, oh, this is where my, this is where my grandpa lives, like, yeah, this is where he came from. That'd be sick. Um, yeah, just become the most effective, efficient person possible that I can be, so I'm not, like, wasting any time away. Yeah. Damn. That's like a mic drop moment, just end it right there. All right. Thank you for having me on, Felix. It's been good talking to you. It was a pleasure. Thank you for the book, by the way. Oh yeah, you wanna show it to the camera? Yeah. You, you gotta read this book, <laughs> all right? I can't endorse it, but like, <laughs> I haven't like, read it or anything. He just got it, so we'll see where he's at next yeah. time we uh, talk, see yeah. if he finishes it. For sure. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure to have you. As always, take it easy, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs>